Let's summarize the plot of Oedipus Rex. In the introduction to the play, it's explained that Oedipus, king of Thebes, arrived years before in the city he now rules as a stranger after the death of King Laius. He was given the crown because he saved the city from the Sphinx. During the rising action, Oedipus sends Creon, his brother-in-law, to consult Apollo about how to stop the plague. Creon reports that Oedipus must find Laius' killer and avenge his death in order to save his people from this pestilence. The chorus suggests to Oedipus that he consult the old blind prophet Tiresias, who ultimately declares Oedipus is the cause of the plague. Oedipus accuses Tiresias of plotting with Creon to seize his throne. Before leaving, Tiresias tells Oedipus that the killer is in Thebes and will become blind and will turn out to be both the son and husband of his mother. Oedipus accuses Creon of plotting against him, and the men argue until Jocasta, Oedipus' wife, intercedes. Oedipus sends Creon out of the palace without punishing him. Jocasta then tells Oedipus of a prophecy that a son of hers, with Laius, would kill his father. She and Laius pinned the child's ankles together and had a shepherd put him in the wilderness to avoid the prophecy. Laius was killed at a place where three roads meet, presumably by robbers. But Oedipus recognizes this place and these circumstances and asks Jocasta to send for the remaining witness of Laius' death, a slave. He also tells Jocasta about his parents in Corinth, but he's been told they're not his real parents. Years ago, he received the same prophecy, that he would marry his mother, have children with her, and kill his father. Oedipus ran away from Corinth to escape the prophecy, but on the way, he met with travelers at a crossroads, one of whom hit him. Oedipus ended up killing them all. Jocasta sends for the slave who witnessed it. The chorus sings that if the prophecy is not actually true, their religious faith is in danger of dying. A messenger arrives and says Oedipus is indeed not the real son of the people he thought were his parents. Oedipus was a gift from a shepherd who found him with his ankles bound and that the shepherd who gave the child to the messenger to give to the couple who raised him was the very slave they have called to share what he witnessed when Laius was killed. Jocasta realizes the truth and frantically leaves. During the climax of Oedipus Rex, the shepherd is called in and, under duress, confirms the prophecy is true. Jocasta hangs herself, and Oedipus uses the brooches from her clothes to put out his eyes so he will no longer see the horror that is his life. During the falling action, Creon takes pity on Oedipus and wants to keep him at the palace, but Oedipus insists on banishment, leaving his children behind, for he now has no power over them. In the brief resolution, the chorus sings bitterly of the unhappy tale, how a powerful man has fallen, and how death is the only thing that will bring happiness to mortals. Let's review the characters in Oedipus Rex, starting with the main character, Oedipus. Earlier in his life, Oedipus left his home city of Corinth, believing he would escape Apollo's prophecy that he would kill his father and sleep with his mother. But while on the road, he killed a traveler and most of the traveler's servants. When Oedipus arrived in Thebes, he became king of the city after saving it from the Sphinx. He married Jocasta, King Laius' widow, and had four children with her. Now, the city is suffering from a plague, and Oedipus discovers that it is his actions that brought the wrath of the gods, and therefore the punishment in the form of pestilence, upon it. When he realizes the horrible prophecy he originally tried to escape has come true, he blinds himself, unable to bear the sight of what his life has become. Jocasta is another important character. Jocasta is queen of Thebes, the wife of Oedipus, and, as it turns out, Oedipus's mother. She had tried to help Oedipus avoid the prophecy that her son will sleep with her and kill his father, and to ensure that the prophecy wouldn't come true, she ordered a shepherd to leave her baby boy, bound at the ankles, on a rock, and then to kill the baby before abandoning him. The shepherd couldn't do it, and gave the baby away to be raised by the couple presumed to be Oedipus' parents. Jocasta tries to keep Oedipus from acting in anger. She's calming to him, assuring him that oracles are silly and not to be believed, but she prays to the gods at their altars anyway. Her public beliefs do not match her private ones. And when she discovers what she has done by marrying Oedipus and having children with him, she hangs herself, taking her own life to escape the horror. Creon, Jocasta's brother and Oedipus's brother-in-law, is another key character. Creon is sent to the Oracle when Oedipus cannot figure out what to do about the plague. When Oedipus accuses him of wanting the throne and plotting with Tiresias, Creon explains that he does not want to rule Thebes and is loyal to Oedipus. 
Creon is a good, kind man. And when the terrible prophecy about Jocasta and Oedipus comes true, Creon wants to keep Oedipus at the palace regardless of the horrible things he has done. Creon ends up taking the throne and the responsibility for the children only because Oedipus can no longer rule. Creon is essentially the most morally centered character of the play. Finally, there's the oracle Tiresias. According to the chorus, Tiresias is on the level of the god Apollo when it comes to seeing the truth. Tiresias does not want to tell Oedipus what he knows because he immediately sees that it is the fulfillment of the prophecy that has caused the pestilence in Thebes. However, when pressed aggressively by the king, he tells him what he knows and is sent away by an angry Oedipus who denies its plausibility and refuses to accept the truth. Let's review the symbols in Oedipus Rex, the first of which is the crossroads, which is the place where the three roads meet where Laius was killed. When people are said to be at a crossroads, they're about to make decisions that will influence the rest of their lives in major ways. Which way will they choose? At this crossroads, hot-headed Oedipus oh. killed his father without realizing it. It was a choice he made in the heat of the moment, but also, in doing so, he has fulfilled part of his fate. The crossroads, a symbol of a life-altering decision, keeps the audience steps ahead before Oedipus himself realizes what he has done. Another major symbol is swollen feet. Oedipus's name means swollen feet or knowledge of one's feet in Latin. As a baby, Oedipus's feet were pierced and bound and his parents abandoned him. His mother, Jocasta, had ordered him killed by a shepherd servant who instead gave the infant to a messenger to be raised by a childless couple. But his feet were scarred as a result. These scars symbolize the crippling fate destined for Oedipus from his birth. It is one of many examples of situational irony that neither Oedipus nor Jocasta connect his scars with the story of his birth. Let's review the main themes in Oedipus Rex, the first of which is self-discovery. Earlier in life, Oedipus wanted to know his true identity at the expense of his presumed parents, Polybus and Merope, stemming from when a drunken man accused him of not really being his parents' son. Oedipus becomes fixated on his own roots as he works toward another discovery, the identity of Laius' killer. When Apollo gives Oedipus the terrible prophecy that he will kill his father and marry his mother, he leaves Corinth forever, but by doing so, he unwittingly brings this fate upon himself. Oedipus's desire to seek out his real parents and true identity is a sign of natural curiosity associated with self-discovery. Jocasta, Oedipus's wife and mother, attempts to remain blind to her real identity and insists oracles are silly, but she continues to pray at the altar, revealing her budding self-discovery to the audience. Realizing the truth, she takes her own life and Oedipus blinds and exiles himself. Both reach their terrible fates through self-discovery. Fate versus free will is another important theme. In Oedipus Rex, the gods, not human beings, determine the fate of an individual. Sophocles' play reflects his belief that suffering serves as a way to clarify the power of the gods and their intentions for humanity. In Oedipus Rex, fate is unavoidable, no matter what the characters do to ensure that they escape their destinies. In fact, the attempt to escape fate seems to be the very thing that ensures that fate is inescapable. For example, Jocasta attempted to avoid her fate by telling the shepherd to abandon, then kill her baby, which led to a chain of events where Oedipus lived to fulfill the prophecy of marrying her after killing unwittingly his father. Human choices and the God's will are perpetually at odds. Blindness is another important theme. All of the characters in Oedipus Rex either start off as blind, become blind, refuse to see the truth, or wish they had never seen it at all. Prophet Tiresias is blind. Oedipus, Jocasta, and Creon are willfully blind to the truth. Oedipus ends up blinding himself at the play's end. And at the end of the play, the chorus wishes they had been blind, wishing they'd never seen Oedipus, whose shame they cannot bear. Blindness symbolizes the character's ignorance. However, once they acquire the knowledge or understanding that leads to the truth, their vision, or fate, becomes clear. Pride is another central theme. Pride figures prominently in many Greek tragedies and is related to the Greek idea of hubris, a person's disregarding of the limits preordained by the gods. By attempting to escape the prophecy, Oedipus ends up fulfilling it. 
In doing so, Oedipus becomes guilty of hubris as he tries to overcome his human limitations and rescind the prophecy. His pride lies in his conviction that he can defy the oracle and change the course of fate. Like her husband, Jocasta is guilty of pride and hubris in her attempt to alter or deny fate. But when she realizes that the prophecy has been fulfilled, she tries to shield Oedipus from the truth. Incapable of coping with the prophecy's fulfillment, she takes her own life. Sophocles, the author of Oedipus Rex, uses a few central motifs, or dominant ideas woven throughout a literary work, to support his themes. The first key motif is that of the oracle, a prophecy predicted in advance that comes to pass. Oracles appear several times throughout the play to help characters determine the truth, even if it is not what they want to hear. Oracular predictions shed light on an ending to come, and the characters fall into place, bringing it to pass, whether they want to or not. The oracle god Apollo, as well as Tiresias the prophet, who serves the purpose of the oracle, represents the fate of human beings as determined by the gods. Another motif is that of light versus darkness. This motif helps to reinforce the theme of blindness, whether literally or figuratively, to the truth and to the prophecy that drives Oedipus's tragic tale. At the start of the play, Oedipus says that, to avenge Laius, he will shed light on darkness, and that, with the gods' help, this will all come to light successfully, or else will prove our common ruin. His words link the concept of light with the revelation of knowledge, a euphemism common to this day and suggests that without knowledge, darkness will prevail in the form of ignorance of the reason for the plague, causing common ruin for the people. Later, a prideful and enraged Oedipus tells Tiresias he lives in endless darkness of the night, and thus cannot really affect someone who can glimpse daylight. By the end of the play, when Oedipus discovers Tiresias has been right all along, he says, O oh light, let me look at you one final time meaning he will either die or blind himself, plunging into permanent darkness. He accomplishes the latter. 